Hello, welcome to the security update with me, Hamza Dabjir. In this program, we will be covering for you the latest stories that matter security in the African countries, from West to Horn of Africa. Ahead on the program, Somalia and Ethiopia discuss security cooperation. Ethiopia grants amnesty to prominent rebel leaders. TBLF party accused the territory of attacking these forces. Plus, Nigeria president forced to crash outlaws as bandits kill dozens in northern Nigeria. Welcome to our program. Somalia and Ethiopia held talks and discussed security cooperation of the two countries. The two sides agreed on the importance of eliminating the remaining Al Shaba fighters in some parts of the country. The Minister of Defense of Somalia, Abdukatir Mohamed Noor, held talks with senior Ethiopian officials aiming to strengthen security cooperation between the two countries. Intensifying the war on Al Shabaab and the regional security issues were among the main agenda of the meeting. Ethiopia is a true contributing nation to the AMISO mission. At one point, it provided 4,395 uniformed personnel before being forced to withdraw thousands of troops. In mid-November, when Ethiopian federal soldiers began fighting forces loyal to the TBLF from the northern region of Tigray, according to officials, the two sides discussed the army's mission and strategies to defeat Al Shabaab. Minister of the Qatar Mohammed Noor thanked Ethiopia for being a security partner and commended Ethiopia's role in the war against Al Shabaab. They also agreed on the importance of eliminating the remaining Al Shabaab fighters in some parts of the country, and Ethiopia affirmed it would continue to assist in supporting Somalia in terms of security. Ethiopia's government on Friday announced an amnesty for some of the country's most high-profile political detainees, including opposition figure Jawar Muhammad and senior Tigray party officials as the country marks Orthodox festival. Speaking of reconciliation for Orthodox Christmas, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said the key to the lasting unity is dialogue. Ethiopia will make any sacrifice to this end. But there was no mention of further negotiations with TPLF rebels who last month said they were ready to enter talks if the government released political prisoners and ended a seven-month siege of Tigray that has cut off food and medicine to the region. It was the most dramatic move yet by the government after the country's deadly Tigray war entered a new phase in late December when Tigray forces retreated into their region amid a military offensive and Ethiopian forces said they would not advance further there. The war in Africa's second most populous country has highlighted the deadly ethnic tensions posing the greatest challenge to Abe's rule. Ethiopia's state broadcaster EBC named both Jawar and opposition figure Eskender Nega who were detained in July 2020 following deadly unrest over the killing of popular ethnic Oromo artist Hachalu Hundesa as those granted amnesty. Eskenda, leader of the Beldera party, left a detention center on Friday evening. But Tuli Bayis, a lawyer for Jawar of the Oromo Federalist Congress Party and others, told media that they refused to leave the prison facility as the order for their release came late in the day. Ethiopia's Ministry of Justice said the amnesty for Jawar and Nega was granted to make the upcoming national dialogue successful and inclusive. Ethiopian lawmakers on December 29 approved a bill to establish a commission for national dialogue amid international pressure for negotiations to end the war. The Ministry of Justice said the TPLF detainees were granted amnesty taking into consideration their age and health condition. Friday's announcements came a day after the United States said its outgoing special envoy for the Horn of Africa, Jeffrey Feltman, met with Ethiopia's Prime Minister to again press for a negotiation. The TBLF party in the Great Region of Ethiopia accuses Eritrea of attacking its forces, an accusation the Eritrean government has not immediately commented on. Eritrean forces have fought against the Ukrainian forces since the start of the war in, so, in support of APS troops. But both nations spent the first five months of the conflict denying the Eritrean presence. 
The Tigray People's Liberation Front, the party that controls most of the northern Ethiopia region of Tigray, on Sunday accused the territory of attacking its troops. Media could not independently verify the alleged attack as the communication network is down in the area. Eritrean Information Minister Yemani Gebremesko did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Officially said war broke out in the mountainous region of 5 million people 14 months ago, pitting Tigrayan forces against federal troops is parked by their Eritrean counterparts. Eritrean forces have fought against the Ukrainian forces since the start of the war in support of Abyss troops. But both nations spent the first five months of the conflict denying the Eritrean presence. The Eritrean troops withdrew from most of the region in June, the same month that Ethiopian federal troops also withdrew. Last month, the Ukrainian forces withdrew from neighboring regions they had invaded in July in a step toward a potential ceasefire. The UN said aid agencies have suspended operations in an area of Tigray's stricken area where deadly airstrike hit a camp for people displaced. The raid came only hours after the Ethiopian government had issued a call for national reconciliation and sparked renewed appeals from Annalam. The raid came only hours after the Ethiopian government had issued a call for national reconciliation and sparked renewed appeals from alarmed international community for an end to the brutal conflict. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, said in a statement to reporters that the attack at midnight on Friday in the town of Dedebit in northwestern Tigray had caused scores of civilian casualties, including death, adding that Humanitarian partners suspended activities in the area due to the ongoing threat of drone strikes. The rebel Trigger People's Liberation Front, TPLF, said the attack had killed 56 people, while an official at the region's main hospital in the capital, Mekele, reported 55 dead and 126 injured. TPLF spokesman Ketchue Reda also claimed in a tweet post Sunday that the Eritrean military had launched attacks against its fighters in northwestern Tigray on Saturday. He accused Eritrea of seeking to sabotage any and all peacemaking efforts in the region ostensibly to protect Ethiopia's unity. It was not possible to independently verify the various claims and access to the region is restricted and it remains under a communications blackout. There was no response to requests for comments from Ethiopian government officials. Eritrean troops have fought in support of Ethiopian government forces against the TPLF and been accused of committing atrocities including rapes and massacres in Tigray. Tigray itself is under what the UN calls a de facto blockade that is preventing life-saving food and medicine from reaching its 6 million people, including hundreds of thousands, in famine-like conditions. President Mohamedou Buhari has expressed outrage at the latest reports of several villagers being killed by escaping parties in Samvari State, northwestern Nigeria. But we will be back after the short break. Making documentaries is one of the most creative craft and challenging endeavors you can be involved in. It is an effective strategy to inform, persuade, educate, defend the perspective and shed light on various issues, policies and activities. At CBA TV, Documentary production is our forte. We capture every TikTok detail of events in highest resolution to tell the story you care about, from politics to human hunger, research-based content, educative and informative. We also help you project your story in a dynamic perspective that attracts the world views of the target audience as there is no better or more powerful way to place the organization's values and achievements than to make an excellent documentary film. No doubt, our strength lies in these ventures and we pride in many award-winning documentaries which have been earning accolades across Africa and beyond. Let's tell your story.
Welcome back to our program. President Muhammadu Buhari has expressed outrage at the latest reports of several villagers being killed by escaping parties in Samfara State, northwestern Nigeria. President Muhammadu Buhari has expressed outrage at the latest report of several villagers being killed by escaping bandits in Safara State, northwestern Nigeria. Buhari, in a statement by his senior special assistant on media and publicity, Garbashew, vowed that his regime would smoke out and destroy the outlaws who have no regard for the sanctity of life. The terrorists who were reportedly fleeing Sanfara State in their large numbers following heavy military onslaught had descended on many helpless villagers. Some of the residents said the terrorists attacked the villages, killing and burning houses after vigilantes engaged them in a gun battle as they were trying to flee the state with no fewer than 300 cattle. The Nigerian president, while commiserating with the people of Sanfara State, promised the besieged communities and other Nigerians that his government would not abandon them to their fate because he is more than ever determined to get rid of the outlaws. Buhari appealed to the affected communities for patience while promising that immediate steps will be taken to tackle the security challenge. More than 143 corpses have been recovered and buried after the attacks. The federal government of Nigeria last week officially designated armed gangs operating in the country as terrorist groups. The gangs, who are locally known as bandits, have been terrorizing many parts of the northern region of Nigeria. State police is not an option. Now, find out now the relationship between local government and the governors. Are they getting, in the third tier of government, are they getting what they are supposed to get constitutionally? Are they getting it? Try and see those people from local government that have confidence in you to tell you the truth. The fighting between local government and the governors. The government stated that security reports have confirmed that the bandit groups were responsible for the killings, adoption, rapes, kidnappings and related crimes in the northeast, north central and other parts of the country. The Somalia National Army forces for the country's Galmudok region repulsed an attack by Al-Shabaab group, killing at least 21 of its members as well as four Somali troops. At least four Somali troops, including senior officials, have been killed by Al-Shabaab group in a town of Galmudok region. The commander of the 13th Battalion of the Somali National Army, Lieutenant Colonel Ali Muhammad and Agawin, the commander of the Somali National Army's 21st Division, were among those killed after Al-Shabaab militants launched an attack. Heavy casualty has been reported from both sides in other Kibir, in other Kibir town, which is about 60 kilometers east of Alada city in central Somalia. The Al-Qaeda linked armed group which launches regular attacks in a peak to undermine Somalia's central government claiming responsibility for the deadly attack. The armed group based in Somalia controls large parts of southern and central Somalia and frequently carries out pumpings and gun attacks on military and civilian targets, including at hotels, intersections and checkpoints. The group has been fighting in Somalia to overthrow the government to establish Sharia law understood in the interpretation. The regional security forces of Jubalani state in Somalia intensified security operations against Al-Shabaab fighters and carried out operations in Kismayo neighborhoods. The forces said the security operations will be continued until the security strengthens. Somalia's Chupalan State Security Forces conducted operations in some parts of Kismayo, the administrative city of the state. Officially said the operation was aimed to target Al Shabaab members and other groups who threatened the locals. Security officers confirmed that they have arrested an unspecified number of suspects who were alleged for terrorizing the region. The regional administration asked residents to help security officials take their responsibilities to secure the region. Al-Shabaab has been waging attacks in southern and central Somalia seeking to unseat the federal government in Mogadishu. The group still controls its worth of territory outside the cities from where they launch attacks against government and civilian targets. It has also carried out deadly attacks in neighboring Kenya. Six Kenyan students of Milamani Secondary School near State House Nairobi were arrested after they tried to pawn their dormitory Sunday night. Police and the school administration, Sunday's incident was the second such attempt. 
Police say up to eight birds were burnt down in the incident before the fire was contained. The boys at last Friday made a similar attempt, but it was thwarted by the school administration. The school called in police who arrested the boys after the fire had been stopped. This is the second school to be affected by such an incident in a week. Another private school was affected last week in Utawala area before eight girls linked to the same were arrested. The six boys were under interrogation before they were taken to court. It is the latest in the series of fire incidents that have affected more than 100 schools in the country in the last four months. The drive for the new wave is yet to be known as such incidents are common in school when final exams are near. As part of efforts to address the issue, Education Cabinet Secretary George Makoha had suggested that teachers and prefects on duty be held culpable for school fires. Professor Makoha said in a number of fires reported across the country, teachers have been reporting they do not know the causes, yet they are tasked with the day-to-day -day running of the institutions. He advised teachers to ensure that dormitories are inspected and locked each morning and the learners' movements monitored. The CS advised learners to remain disciplined and warned that investigation will reveal the identities of those behind the fires. Their details, he added, will be included in a database that can be used against them in their entire career. Makoha said it was time to hold a national conversation on the issue of on the issue of corporate punishment and urge parents to show more concern for their children. And with that, the story of six Kenyan students of Milamani Secondary School near his state house, Nairobi, were arrested after they tried to pound the dormitory Sunday night. We'll wrap up our program for this time. Thank you very much for being with us.